I think one of the big questions on everyone's mind is if there was a decision made to use the military in Venezuela, what would that look like? How would it begin? When would it begin? And how long would it take? Many people default to what happened in Panama. And from personal experience, I can tell you the two situations could not be more different. Not taking away anything from the 82nd or any of those who served in Panama, but it was the most powerful military on the planet versus a glorified police force that they had trained in urban combat. It was not really a war. It was a slaughter. And that's just the reality of it. There's pictures that people like to show like this. You know, you got the C-130 and you got the guys running up to it. You know, and then you have this. You know, you've got the buildings, you've got people running in the front, of course, all of these. But here's some of the images that not a lot of people show. This is also from Operation Just Cause. As you can see, things weren't always quite as intense. It's a tough thing. It really is when you get to be an older soldier, look back and see the reality of what was really going on. Now, like I said, I don't want to take anything away from these guys. They did their job. They did it well. They followed orders. They got the job done. However, Venezuela is not going to be Panama. And one of the reasons is this guy. At this time, back during the invasion of Panama, Venezuela was our ally. Colombia was much closer to being an enemy than Venezuela was. But this guy, Vladimir Padrino, the head of the Venezuelan military, was trained at Fort Benning in psychological operations. To my mind, it's the primary reason all of the efforts of D.C. have failed thus far. Because he knows all of the tricks of the trade. He knows the game. He knows how people get flipped. He knows the fake false promises from D.C. And he's been able to train his cadre, train everyone around him in these techniques. That's why they haven't been able to flip him. And you'd have to ask yourself a question. Why would that be necessary? Why would the U.S. have to put so much effort into flipping a foreign military to commit treason against their leader if everything they're saying about what's really going on in that country is true? We shouldn't have to do it at all. They should have already done it, right? Now, one of the reasons I don't think a military option is going to be successful in any way is this. How many of you out there remember when Westboro Baptist was protesting the funerals of our soldiers and voluntarily, of their own accord, large biker organizations went out to these funerals and lined the streets so that the people didn't have to see the protesters? Well, in Venezuela, there's a group of bikers that pretty much operate the same way, out of loyalty, out of patriotism, out of a sense of duty. They protect their leader, and they're the, the colectivo bikers. And one of the things that was um, banned for import into the country was barbed wire or razor wire, because one of the things the opposition was doing, these people that were on the side of Marco Rubio and the current president and all these people, they were taking lengths of barbed wire and laying them across roads on the ground, invisible. And then as these bikers would come by, they would pull them taut and decapitate these guys. That's what caused a lot of the roundups. That's what caused the special police to get involved and start rounding up protesters. Was that. These guys trying to protect the president, protect Miraflores Palace, which is right here in the middle of Caracas. And people hear Miraflores Palace and they think this giant place. It's big and it's beautiful, but I've seen private homes here in Florida, Mar-a-Lago being one of them, that's very much on par, some bigger, some much nicer. 
this is right in the middle of the city. This isn't out off the coast, way far away from everyone. And I think that's part of the, the equation here. Because you have four cardinal directions. How do you, if your definition of win is take out the leader, take out Nicolas Maduro, how do you get to Miraflores without causing massive amounts of collateral damage? And how do you do it quickly and how do you do it efficiently? I think our military has figured out that's not an easy question to answer. Because there's a bunch of different ways that you can go in, and I'm going to try to cover those in this video. To the north, Caracas sets just inside this line of mountains right here. And here's the, the Caribbean Sea up here. And Miraflores is here. Now, you can come in from the north and bring somebody in, bring somebody, bring some uh, units in. But the problem is there's all sorts of warning, Grand Rock or Chilla. And the Cubans, which are basically just right here, pretty much have this all locked down. They know pretty much every boat, everything that's going on. So there would always be warning. And once the warning was given, you'll never get him without killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the process. You'll never come in through Colombia because even the Colombians will tell you that that area is overrun with what they call the FARC and ELN. FARC is an acronym, Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia, literally the Revolutionary Army, um, Armed Forces of Colombia. EP stands for Ejército Popular, that means the, uh, the People's Army. Um, ELN stands for Ejército Liberación Nacional, um, People's Liberation Army, all this just different um, acronyms for the same thing. People that don't like the corporatism that has taken over their country. And these people completely control the eastern part of Colombia. So there would be almost no chance of any invasion force getting itself into Colombia to go into Venezuela without there being all sorts of alarm bells set off. Brazil coming in through the south would be just as tough because there's such a slog to be made through this jungle and in through this southern part here. And out here in the country, these are the, the Chavistas down here. These are the, the people that, that support Nicolas Maduro. They would let him know, and coming in from the West, the only chance might possibly be Guyana, but still you have the same problem. You see, it goes to the definition of win. If you want to go full scorched earth and, you know, kill thousands, tens of thousands of people, and then try to install your own puppet like we did in Iraq with, with Hussein, it's going to end like that did. If that's not a definition of win, have we won in Iraq? Have we won in Afghanistan? Can anybody honestly look in the mirror and say, yes, we won? It's 20 odd years now, and we still got all sorts of things going on and going wrong. Same thing's going to happen here. And their military, like I said, has the root, its roots in training. In the United States military doctrine, their leaders, their generals, their people at that rank took their training from the United States military. These people are, this is not a glorified police force. This is not a, uh, a bunch of sad sacks. They have had some financial problems in the last four to five years, but prior to that, they were very, very wealthy, meaning they had top-of-the-line equipment, and they still do. Some of it's in need of repair, that's for sure, and some of it could use some upgrades, but the guys themselves are professional soldiers. And when they do their time and they serve, then they become members of the militia, and they number in the millions. 
you try to install, and I'm, I put this up here just to show, I honestly believe that DC is going to try something like this. These are the picture of the wells from Iraq. After the election is over, this is my official prediction. If there is a plan militarily to go in, it's set for probably January of next year. After the election's over, after the holidays are all over, they are going to probably get somebody in, a small special forces team, into the Lake Maracaibo region. And there's all sorts of well towers in here. And they're going to set them off and get them burning. And they're going to do this to try to smear Nicolas Maduro and say, see, he knew our forces were coming and he did the same thing as the evil dictator Saddam Hussein. And they're going to try to, to broad brush, paint him in the same light as they did that guy. Same thing they did with Gaddafi. And they're going to get, you know, public sentiment on their side. And then they're going to try to go in and take this guy out. And they'll have some Venezuelans, some ignorant ones on their side. But they're probably going to spend the next year still trying to infiltrate and get people in places to take him out. They might try to bait him with some type of an offer um, of meeting, like maybe directly with the president or something. Um, it's never going to happen. And once they have him out and away from Caracas, that's when they're going to try to take him down. And I'll tell you this right now. This guy named this Juan Guaido, they're going to have to, people, it's ironic, people talk about the Cubans protecting Maduro. D.C. is going to have to surround him, meaning Guaido, with all sorts of security. Or they'll kill him. These people aren't going to be ruled by him. They're going to ignore him. And, you know, D.C. probably has a plan to throw a whole bunch of money into Venezuela after this and import a bunch of stuff and then get their photo ops with people with full bags of groceries and how great we are. You know, you know how they work. But after the uh, current leader, if he wins the election next year, this year, pardon me, and he has no more use for you, once he knows that, you know, your vote, you can't vote for him again. This is when he'll pull this. And we do. We have, you know, great air power and we have wonderful Navy and we have, you know, I'm not trying to denigrate our armed forces, but when you go invade a sovereign nation and they have million man standing militia and U.S. trained forces on the ground and people that are loyal and the countries around that country aren't exactly friendly to you. That's that's a tough slog. It really is. It's going to cost a lot of lives. And don't think Nicaragua won't play a role in this. I mean, Venezuela has allies, big allies. China, Russia, Nicaragua, Cuba, all these countries through here that have been able to kick out U.S. corporatism and try to just be their own country. You know, this area, it'll be a bloodbath. This won't be quick. There's going to be no mission accomplished banners um, on any air, air, aircraft carriers. I'll tell you that. And even if you do, I'd have to ask you a question. If you get rid of Maduro, what are you going to do about his vice president, Delcy Rodriguez? What are you going to do about all those millions and millions and millions of people that voted for him? You think he's the only Chavista in the country? They don't like showing the pictures of the streets lined pretty much over the horizon with supporters. It will be ugly. And there will be people come in from Brazil. If the current leader is foolish enough to really put boots on the ground, there will be fighters come in from Brazil, fighters come in from Colombia, all over just for a chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our guys. And take them out in a jungle setting. Killing and capturing is easy in the jungle. When you know the jungle and the person who's invading doesn't. So, I'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.